turn to the Psalms 37. Psalms 37, if you will, beginning at verse 1. Psalms 37. Psalm 37. Let us stand as we read the word of God. Amen. I want to bless God for the choir and, and always ushering in God's presence, and his manifest presence. Amen. Psalm 37, beginning at verse 1. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade away like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the, or over the man who carries out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. For the evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. In just a little while, let's say in a little while, in a little while, the wicked will weep no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. You also want to pray for uh, the country of Ukraine. Man, uh, it's amazing how in 2022, folk can just dry their tanks and come across country borders and just start blowing stuff up. And we just watch. And when there's no vested interest in war, we just watch. Well, tangible interest, but I've come to discover that life is much more important than anything tangible. Amen. Amen. So we pray for them. Psalms 37, I want to tag this text this morning as a spiritual guide and considering all that's going on around us. Trusting the Lord in the midst of turmoil. Uh, trusting the Lord in the midst of turmoil. I know we're in a COVID season and you're not sitting all close and comfy um, to your neighbor. Um, and you're wearing masks this morning. But you, you don't have to turn directly to them. But just tap yourself on the shoulder and just, just say, he hasn't forgotten about me. He yeah, he hasn't forgotten about me. What, one of the puzzling um, things or questions for Christians, and even as we close out Black History Month, um, I believe uh, our matriarchs and the patriarchs of the faith, those who were at the forefront of the civil rights movement, you knew most of them, you know most of them were clergy and people of faith. It's one of the puzzling questions when you talk to those who have walked and marched and protests. One of the puzzling questions they always ask is, where was God? Well, I've come to discover that when you can't track, or trace him, or he seems to be absent He's always active. And as Christians, we, 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 we wonder why do the righteous suffer? And when you put a pen there, you, you, you pause there, and you, there are many who didn't look like us, yet were on the front line 
with us. But we deal with the brunt of struggle. And so sometimes we, we ask that question as we walk with the Lord. Where was God in the midst of all that turmoil? Even now as we embark upon two years of this month dealing with what we call a pandemic in the midst, lives have been lost. And many of us sitting here this morning has been in, in, infected or affected or affected because we have lost some loved ones or we've been in the hospital clinging on to our lives. And even in the midst of all that, we asked uh, the question, where, 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 where was God? Where, where is where is God? I'm a faithful giver. I'm a faithful member. I come to Bible study. I, I pray periodically throughout today. I, I, I'm a tither. I mean, I love the Lord with all my heart, all my soul. But at the end of the day, in your humanity, you have the propensity to ask that question, where is God? This is a legitimate question, if you will, even as a Christian. It's not that you're doubting him. It's, it's that it, 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 Moses had a relationship with God to the point where he even had an argumentative conversation with him. But God had to check him and let him know, I'm still God. And so when you're in right relationship with him, you can have communication with him. You can have, you can have some questions for him, but this is a legitimate question. Just one of many things we wrestle with in this life that we do not understand. It, it may appear that the unrighteous are excelling in the world above and beyond Christians. But as Christians, we must understand that appearances are deceiving. Let, let, let me say that again. But, but as Christians, we must understand that appearances are deceiving. You should not worry about what your neighbors drive. Yeah. yeah, because at the end of the day, if you driving a Hyundai Sonata and they're driving a Tesla, yeah, guess what? At the end of that, that, that note is a little bit higher than yours. And you, you don't know looks could be deceiving. Everything that glitter is not gold. 5,000 square feet to your 2,200 square feet. Be thankful for what you have because the Bible is very clear. If you be faithful over a few things... I'll make you rulers of uh, many. See, see that, that's where we get ourselves in trouble is we're trying to keep up with the Joneses when our last name is Johnson. Uh, stay in your lane because looks are deceiving. God ultimately has the final say-so in regards to your life. Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon, the great theologian, they call Charles Spurgeon the prince of preachers. He puts it like this. Sinners are not, as a general rule, punished here on earth. Let, let that settle. Yeah, let that settle. Sinners, they are not punished here on earth. Their sentence is reserved until the day of judgment. This is not the time for judgment right now for Vladimir Putin, but he one day he's going to have to sit at the Bema seat. And, and judgment is yet to come. David records this psalm based on what he saw that was going on all around him, the turmoil, the chaos, and the, the prosperity of the wicked and, and, and the suffering of the righteous. We still try to understand or comprehend why do righteous folks suffer. Jesus says in John chapter 16, verse 33, he puts it very clearly. He said, in this life, we will have tribulation, but, but be of good cheer because I have already overcome the world. If Jesus 
was tempted at all points, and Jesus went to an old rugged cross, bled and died for the sins of the world, what makes you think or make me think that we would get an exemption card from trouble? See, see, we live in a world where we, we, if, if, if you have any issues, people think that you're not living right. If you have a turmoil in your life that you're not living right. No, no, no. If everything is cool, um, everything is good, all the bills, bills are always paid. You never get sick. Your children are all out of society. You live on the high end in the high rent district. If, if you don't have ever have any issues in your life one might question your relationship with God because if he had trouble you will have some trouble yes young folk always say you ask them how they're doing Yo, it's all good everything's straight but but when you look at the great portal that says something different I'm trying to help somebody here this morning David recorded this song based on what he saw all around him. In, in, in response, David challenged the faithful not to become exacerbated when the ungodly excel. Hear that. Not that you're judging anyone, but it could be your neighbor and you don't know how they're walking, but don't be concerned about what they have or their session or their ascension on the job or wherever it may be. Focus on you because if you use that energy focusing on what somebody else has, you're going to miss out on what God has for you. Yeah, don't, don't, don't go to the dealership and go by that Range Rover on the Explorer budget. <laughs> David challenged the faith not to become exacerbated when the ungodly excel, often at the expense, watch this, of the godly. But you, we need to be remain focused on God. Psalm 37 is a song that doesn't address God as most songs but it's spoken directly to us, calling on us to trust in God. It, it continues the theme. Go back and read Psalms 36 by dealing with our response to the wickedness of evildoers. That's why you got to be careful how you deal with people. <clears throat> Don't treat them like they treat you. Your co-worker don't want to speak? Good morning. Your, your, your supervisor has a bipolar complex? Good morning. See, see, when you respond the way they treat you, you pull yourself down to the standards that the enemy wants you, watch this, to succumb to focus on God. Your, your neighbor, oh, he don't want to speak. Good morning, Bob. How you doing today? Because some people say, I just want to stay in my lane, but no, do what the Lord requires you to do because one day you're going to speak and they're going to speak back and then watch this and then you're going to have a conversation with them and the conversation with them was the one they've been wanting to have with you all the five to ten years that you've been living with living that living next door to them because they've been going through something but since you've been speaking every day despite them speaking to you now it's time for you to deposit a word in them that's going to help them live to see another day who am I talking to this morning let the Lord use you in spite of everything the Lord promises Come to pass in his time. We, we operate in Kronos. God operates in Kairos. You can't rush God. We ready for this COVID to be over. Yeah, yeah. Saint, I work in St. John's County now, and they don't believe in COVID. I mean, I'm just, no, nobody 
wears masks in public arena. They don't wear them. At they, they don't wear them. I mean, some people just want this to be over. Well, it's in God's time. Talked with a nurse this morning walking the dog. She works at the Mayo Clinic, and she said people don't realize there are people vaccinated, people still getting sick, and people still dying. They're just not publicizing it. It's in his time. Until it does, we, we should continue to live righteously, not worry about the wicked, and rest in the confidence that the Lord will do what he says he will do. But David gives us some assurances here in the text to help us trust the Lord in the midst of turmoil. If you're writing notes this morning, number one, he gives us some tips from the Lord. Look at verse 1 and 2. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Under that first point, you need to understand that evil works may initially prosper. Initially. Putin think he's going to get away with what he's doing watching the news last night and the president of Ukraine he said don't y'all listen to the propaganda that we just laying down our weapons and not fighting he said no I, every citizen and they have a small military right now when you watch the news you can see that they're forming a circular pattern to try to invade the capital city if the people were in fact fighting back they would have already invaded the city Evil works may initially prosper. But number two, evil works, watch this, will ultimately perish. Come here, Jesus. Um, they thought he was a victim on the cross. <laughs> but, but you know the story because if I give you the story, I can go ahead and close the Bible and close the sermon. But, but, but initially they thought they had him defeated because he looked like a victim on the old rugged cross. They thought that their evil works were going to prosper. The Sadducees and the Pharisees had joined forces to kill our Savior. What they did not know is they were fulfilling the prophecy and ultimately they would perish. Yeah, y'all, you hear that? They fulfilled the prophecy, but what they thought would prosper ultimately perished. Tips from the Lord. Then there you, you, you must, not only does David give you some tips, but he says you got to trust him. Verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. <laughs> and he will give you the desires of your heart. Verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. Let, let, just, let the church say, do good. Amen. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. You, you don't shine if you're not doing good. But G G G David says, you have to do good. Trust him and do good. But say, if you do good, you're going to dwell good. Hmm. Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1, two, th one through 3, God said, if you want to be blessed, you got, you, you got to get away from this paganist territory. You got to leave that country. You got to step out on faith, and you got to go to a place that you've never seen before, never been before, without a compass, without a map. All you're going to have is my word. And if you do good, you will find out when you get there, you will dwell good. Now, how many of y'all stepped out on faith based on what God told you to do? And when you got to the place where he told you to go without a map, without specific instructions, you just left. And when you showed up there, you're still there 20 years later. And you've been chilling, sipping in the land of milk and honey ever since God told you to move. You, you got to do good. And you'll dwell good. You wonder why some folk, that old cliche term, I, when I... When I was younger, you know, people used to they throw it through. You used to throw it out there, and they were dead wrong. Um, 
Man, you need to do a 360 with your life. All y'all heard that before. But if you do a 360, cause you're right back where you started. No, you need to do a 180 with your life. Because at the end of the day, when you do a 180, you might leave some good things behind. But more importantly, you leave some old, narcissistic, pessimistic, hellish ways in the past. More so because whatever you're leaving by good, that means God is taking you to greater things. Abraham left, and we know him as the father of the faithful. God told him, I will bless you as far as the, the sand on the seashore, the stars in the skies. And he did exactly what he said he did. So, so there are some tips from the Lord. You must trust the Lord. But then verse 4 says, take delight in the Lord. Delight means, hear this, to be brought up, watch this, in luxury, to be pampered. Hmm. It's not talking about what you're driving and where you're living and how many Benjamins you have in the bank. It speaks of the abundant blessings we have in the Lord himself totally apart from what he already gives us. It has nothing to do with the tangible, Jesus says, in this life. Watch this. Yeah, we're going to have some trouble, but this life that he's referencing to, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, watch this. I don't want you to just have a good life, but I want you to live a life that's more abundantly. And in that abundance, there's peace, there's joy, there's love, there's happiness, there's no weariness, all spiritual things. So you can live good, be in Hollywood, but be miserable in your own confines. You can walk out the door, a Gucci belt, um, Gucci shoes, a nice car, all that good stuff. Go all around the world, travel, big baller, shot caller, number one stutter, and be miserable. Hmm. Delight means delight in the Lord. You got to understand, in Jesus, we have all we need. How many of y'all believe that morning, this morning? In Jesus, we have all we need. To enjoy the blessings and ignore the blesser is to practice idolatry. What, what, what do you mean, preacher? If you delight in him, um, 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 you, 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 you'll give what he truly deserves. It, it, yeah, let me say that again. To enjoy the blessings and to ignore the blesser is to practice idolatry. Come here, Matthew, where your treasure is. It's where your heart is. Uh, my, my father in the ministry, Dr. William C. Barker Jr., he said, you check, check, check. You, you, the way to find out how committed people are to God, just check the checkbook. Y'all real quiet up in here. Well, not nowadays in the COVID generation, you can't check Gibbler file. You, you, you can't check um, Cash App. You can't check all the other mechanisms that they use to give. I'm not trying to beat up on anybody. I'm just trying to let you know if he blesses you, watch this, <laughs> it just makes sense to do what's right and pleasing in his sight because all you're doing is, is giving him back a portion of what he's blessed you with. You know, it's amazing what we'll cut checks for. But when it comes to God, oh man, Lord Jesus, boy. We just, we, yeah, I don't know. No. Take delight in the Lord, but then you got to totally commit to the Lord. Verse 5 and verse 6. Look at verse 5 and, and, and verse 6. Verse 6 says, commit. Let the church say commit. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as light. Trust in him. What, 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 how are we trusting? What you, you commit in him to him. You dump your burdens on him. 
the Lord. Look at the text. He will bring, watch this, commit your way, trust in him, and he will act. If you have some trouble, just put it at his feet. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He, he cares for you just like he cares for your neighbor. You, you got you, you, you to dump your burdens on him. Why carry around the load when you don't have to carry it? Even waste management has to dump that stuff somewhere. Because if they don't dump it, they can't come back to get the rest of the neighborhood whose trash is sitting beside the road. God is trying to tell you this morning, if you're carrying a heavy load, my shoulders are big enough for you to just leave them right here at the altar. Dump your burdens. If you dump your burdens, watch what will happen. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. He will act. He will bring forth righteousness as the light and, and justice at the noonday. Justice literally means that you're going to get your breakthrough. If you lay that load on his shoulders, your breakthrough is on the way. There's no need for you to carry around stuff that you're not built to carry. That's why he says, he says, put them on my shoulders. And when you lighten the load, you can do what you've been called to do. You can operate on the job more effectively. You can be a better parent. You can be a better thinker. You, you won't be distracted because you're no longer carrying what you're not designed or built to carry. Totally commit to the Lord. But then, here's where it gets tough, deep. Try waiting on the Lord. Psalms 46 and 10 says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Verses 7 through 9, I'm almost done. Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently. Some of y'all jittery right now because you're anxious. Anxiety is set in because you're worrying about something. You're worrying about if you're going to get the phone call for the job when God already has worked that thing out. I, I know how I've been there. I know, trust me, from the pulpit to the pew, I know how it feels to have a sense of anxiety and, 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 and anxiousness. But, but the Bible says be anxious for nothing. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, make your request be made known unto God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Well, God, your mind, wait patiently is, is what, the, what the psalmist is suggesting here. He says, fret not yourself over those who prospers in the way, over the man who carries out evil devices, because you know why you're waiting, the enemy is plotting. While you're waiting on that call, somebody who knows you applied for the job is trying to make phone calls so you don't get the job because they're not qualified the job and never really wanted the job. They just don't want you to have it because they really don't have the intestinal fortitude to even work the job that you're trying to get. So, so enemy always working. Refrain from anger. <laughs> have mercy, Lord. Forsake. Wrath, fret not yourself, it, it tends only to evil. Are y'all hearing me this morning? For the evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. While you wait, you got to wait silently. Don't go talking to folk about what you're waiting on. Because those who you think you can confide in are the very ones who are going to be plotting and planning against what you're trying to do. So you wait with your mouth closed. 
We all struggle with that because that's when anxiety begins to set in and we're nervous and we want an answer. I don't, uh, trust me, I trust me. I, I, I'm, when I was transitioning and, and, and retiring too, because, you know, my, my, my wife would tell it best. Yeah, he, he, he retired. That sounds good. But, but he really retiring too, yeah. So I was off two months, let's just let y'all know, and back working again. But at the end of the day, there were some jobs that I wanted. I'm like, man, they ain't called me yet. They ain't called me yet. But then you know what? In the midst of me being concerned about one call, God gave me the call that I needed because I knew, watch this, not just based on who I was, but I had a resume like David that says, regardless of who calls, I'll find a job somewhere. But what God did, did was he orchestrated and put me in the right place at the right time in the midst of all that was going on. He, he said, you got to wait silently. But then while you're waiting, you can't get mad if it, what you really wanted don't come through for you. What you wanted, what I wanted, but where God placed you is right where he wanted you to be. So you can't get mad. You know, so man, they, man, they, they hired some old clown. Man, they ain't get a job to me, man. You know, I'm blah, blah, this, and blah, blah, that. Woe is me and this and that and this and that. You learn from that because we all been there. And then you come to the realization, you know what? That wasn't for me. It wasn't ordained for me to be there because God had somewhere else he wanted me to be. He wanted me to serve things that other things that he wanted me to do. Who am I talking to this morning that can testify that that might have been you. But when you walk into the place where God told you to land your feet, it's been high time ever since. You've been happy. You've been excited. You've been overwhelmed. And if the truth be told, the place that I really wanted to go they had a set salary but the place where I landed I'm about to get my third and then fourth raise in less than a year and a half I'm just trying to let you know this morning if you listen to God and talk to God and do good and wait silently he'll bless your life shoot raises Take-home car, office. God is good. But if you wait silent, <coughs> slow to anger. Let me give you all some scripture. Philippians chapter 4, verse 26. Be angry and sin not. See, you can, you can get mad. You just, in the midst of your madness, don't go to cussing somebody out. Because that's where the sin comes in. You, you, you can be mad. You, you can be angry to the point to where you want to do it. But the do good and the light shining in you says, I can't do it. I'm trying to help somebody here this morning because we all are human. And we all have been there. But the Bible, it, 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 it's never a waste for words. It's the basic instructions before leaving earth. It encourages us to do what's right and pleasing in God's sight. And the person who wrote this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 26, used to cuss, used to kill Christians, used to put them in jail. But now he's written 13 epistles, four missionary journeys, sat in prison, writing letters to all churches throughout the region that he established and he's letting us know I've been right where you are but if you want God to bless your life wait silently so you got the tips and I'm done preaching you got to trust him take delight in him commit to him try waiting but I'm finally verse 10 and 11 When you wait on him, you'll discover you'll be able to thrive with him. See, there are some people, they just want to survive. Survival is not what God has intended for any child of God. See, 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 they we just want to live. 
paycheck to paycheck, day by day, just sitting by the road, begging as the pilgrims go by to Jerusalem, sit at the pool and wait for the water to wade so I can jump in and get healed. That's, that's not living. That's, wait, wait, waiting on somebody to call me when everybody in the, in, in the city hiring right now. That's, that, that's, that's, not, that's not living. Can't nobody tell you right now that there's no jobs out there. I went to a job fair last week in Ocala, and Ocala has, I didn't realize, is a manufacturing mecca. Every warehouse you could name was there represented, and they were hiring $20, $21, $22 an hour. And you rarely saw anybody walk through the door. And when you talk to them, the recruiters, they say, well, I just, we hurting right now. That's not surviving. You want to thrive with the Lord. And, and as I close, verse 10, in just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. That, that's why I focus on God, where God is trying to take you and not what's going on with somebody else. Because ultimately, what they're doing, it's going to fade away. Y'all, y'all, it's like, them, like, you know, when the business opened up, you know it wasn't going to last. That's just how the wicked is. They'll run out of tricks and gimmicks. But then the text says, watch this, but the meek, those who are humble, those who don't have to boast and brag about their credentials, because God will find you right where you are. Pride, watch this. God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. He, 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 you, you would, the, but the meek will what? Inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. It's a blessing when you can inherit the land and live in peace. What, what they're doing over in Ukraine, whatever they call themselves trying to conquer, conquer, they'll never be able to live in peace. And as we close out Black History Month, <laughs> voter oppression, Y'all ain't saying nothing. In 2022, we have to push legislature to sign a bill to continue a bill that was already established in 2022. Miss 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 Johnson, who's 95 years old. <coughs> Can't, can't go to a, a box on the corner because she's not able to go stand in line and vote. You can't pass out water to people in... So y'all got to understand what's really going on as we close out Black History Month. You can't pass out water to people who are standing in line that are wrapped around buildings. And then you're closing places that gives those access to vote in 2022. So that's why it's incumbent upon us that you go out and vote. No matter who you vote for, what party your affiliation is, exercise the privilege that was given to you by those who allow us, better yet, to sing the song that we sang before I got up to preach. So, trusting the Lord in the midst of turmoil. You got your tips. You got to trust him. You got to take delight in him, totally commit to him, try waiting on him, and if you wait on him, you will thrive. Let us all God bless you and God keep you. Amen.